in round number seven. Well, let's take a look at the HBO sports calendar. Tuesday, catch the next real sports. Among the stories, our cameras follow law enforcement as they bust illegal dog fighting rings. Also, an exclusive interview with Adam Pacman Jones, the Tennessee Titans suspended for the upcoming season for off the field incidents. Each Wednesday for the next four weeks, it's Hard Knocks training camp with the Kansas City Chiefs. You'll go behind the scenes as the Chiefs try to sort out their roster spot in a grueling battle throughout the hot days of August in training camp, plus their quarterback battle and their running back dilemma. September the 12th, it's the premiere of Inside the NFL. Check out all the action with Bob Costas, Dan Marino, Chris Collinsworth, and Chris Carter. And September the 29th, live on HBO, middleweight champion Jermaine Taylor defends his title against undefeated challenger Kelly Pavlik, a great matchup. For all the California. Well, the Arco Arena, a little bit stunned. The Filipino fans thrilled with Jerry Penalosa's victory. Uh, Lennox Lewis, that was just a very impressive performance by Jerry Penalosa here tonight. Well, you know, the last punch was a definitely an impressive punch. Uh, I was expecting a, a lot more from him earlier, but he definitely disa di didn't disappoint the fans. He ended it with a great punch to the liver. Well, that uh, gets us set for our main event here with Daniel Ponce de Leon. He's defending his championship tonight against Ray Batista. And, you know, with Daniel Ponce de Leon in his last fight against Jerry Penalosa, who just came up with a stirring victory, he was the winner, although many people at ring side felt that Daniel Ponce de Leon did not do enough to win. He threw 1,399 punches in the fight. The question is, were those punches just quantity or quality? Well, you know, in his last fight, he threw a lot of punches, and as you can see, he used a lot of arm punches. And, you know, when it comes to the judging, they want to see quality. They don't want to see quantity. And, I mean, it depends on who the judges are as well, but he wasn't impressive, that impressive in his last fight, and this fight he hopes to be more impressive. Now, he got hurt in the second round, and it's almost as if he used the volume of punches to kind of keep Penalosa away and come up with a unanimous decision victory. Well, well, for this fight, he definitely needs to sit under his punches and put a lot of more power behind his punches to impress us a bit more than he did in his last fight. All right, well, Ray Batista is 21 years of age, and he is a guy with a lot of promise out of the Philippines. He wants to come and take Daniel Ponce de Leon's title away tonight here in Sacramento. The question is, everybody in the Philippines is pointing toward Ray Batista as a big-time star. What is it like at the age of 21 to be fighting for your wor first world championship with the weight of a nation following you. The town he's from, they have big screens set up everywhere to watch Ray Batista fight. Let me tell you, there's a lot of pressure behind him. He wants to be the next big star in the Philippines. He's taking this fight very serious. He came over here, he's been doing seven weeks of training camp. That shows you how serious he is about this fight. And uh, he wants to be the next star, and this is gonna be his chance. So we're gonna, I can't wait to see him in the ring either. Well, you know, you mentioned that he was here for seven weeks and trying to get acclimated. Talk about the commitment level to come to America for that long of time and what he hoped to accomplish by being here for seven weeks. Well, for being uh, being here for seven weeks, you got to get climatized. Over here, you got a dry heat. It's very hot and it's very dry. You can get cut easily. Uh, it's very important to have uh, to be conditioned to the environment. So he's doing the right thing by coming over here and training for seven weeks. Did some good sparring over here. I'm excited about him, and uh, I can't wait to see him in the ring. He and his camp have done their own cooking, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, a lot of fish. They said the transition has been seamless. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event, Daniel Ponce de Leon and Ray Batista. Batista just 21 years of age. Batista one inch taller, slight reach advantage for De Leon, both weighing in at 121 pounds. You see that De Leon on our unofficial HBO Boxing After Dark Scales has put on nine pounds. Batista has put on eight. Time for the rules with Harold Letterman. The Daniel Ponce De Leon, Ray Batista fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. Case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Bob! Ray Boom Boom Bautista from the Philippines came from a very humble beginning. His father was a fisherman. 
His dad did some amateur boxing. That's how he was first introduced to the sport. A former Philippine flyweight national champion. Says he learned a lot from Jerry Penalosa's loss to Daniel Ponce de Leon. And he just feels supremely confident in his abilities to win this fight tonight. The psychological aspects, he says, are not a factor. Well, he's young and hungry. That's the main thing. And he wants to go out there. He obviously wants to be the next star in the Philippines. This is his opportunity. We're going to have to see if he can really come through with this and, and, and perform well. Well, Ray Batista in the biggest stage of his career, a world title fight for the first time. Turned pro on June the 12th, 2003. Has 110 rounds as a professional under his belt. And we will see how Batista can handle the volume and the amount of punches that will be displayed by this man, 27-year-old Daniel Ponce de Leon. His boxing idols were Finito Lopez, Julio Cesar Chavez, and Daniel Zaragoza. It was a personal thrill for him as a kid to be co-trained by Daniel Gar Zaragoza as he was preparing for the Mexican Olympic team, participated in the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney. He's a businessman. He's invested his money wisely, but he says boxing is his focus, and he wants to make his fifth title defense tonight in impressive fashion. Well, he's, he's definitely throws a lot of punches, and we want to see more better punches, better quality punches in this fight than quantity. Daniel Ponce de Leon has made his entrance into the ring. He spent time in California, also from Guatemoc, Mexico. Time for the introductions. Once again, our ring announcer, Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, from Arco Arena, Sacramento, California, once again, it is the World Cup of Boxing being brought to you by Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, La Cerveza Tecate, Tecate Beer with Attitude, Rockstar Energy Drink, Party Like a Rockstar, and Ice Link Watch Exquisite Timepiece. This bout is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. President of the WBO, Francisco Paco Balcarce. Supervisor, Richard DeCure. The judges are Max DeLuca, Steve English, and John Stewart. The referee, John Shorley. And now, damas y caballeros from Mexico, Mabuhay, Philippines. The time has come to see who is El Mas Macho. Introducing first, he sets into the ring as the challenger in the blue corner. Wearing black trunks trimmed in white and red. And weighing in at 121 and one half pounds. He is an undefeated professional fighter with 23 victories. 17 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Tagbiladan Bohol, Philippines. Ray Boom Bautista. Across the ring of the red corner. He steps in wearing black, trim, and gold. And weighing in at 121 and one half pounds. As an amateur, he proudly represented his homeland of Mexico in the 2000 Olympics. And as a pro, he maintains a record consisting of 31 victories with one lone defeat and 28 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Defending his WBO Junior Featherweight Championship of the World, De Cuauhtémoc, Chihuahua, Mexico. Daniel Ponce de Leon. Okay, guys, for the WBO championship, give me a good, clean fight. Cuts gloves, good luck. So we are set for the main event. Daniel Ponce de Leon. 
And Ray Batista, 12 rounds, Ponce de Leon's championship at stake. Batista is hungry. Ponce de Leon can be defensive. But, you know, despite the fact that we talked about his last fight in which he didn't really sit down on his punches and he used volume to beat Jerry Penalosa, this is a boxer with 32 pro bouts, 28 knockout victories. So there's got to be some power somewhere in there for Ponce de Leon. Nine first round knockouts in his career. Batista has won. You mentioned that Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy Promotions put together this World Cup, Mexico against the Philippines. It's been all Philippines here tonight at the Arco. They've won the first five bouts of the evening. But more importantly, a title at stake. And if you look at the trainer, Freddie Roach, he's 5-0 with the Philippine boxers. Lennox, what, what's it like when the bell finally rings for someone like Batista who worked his career to get into a world title fight, that first round of your first ever world title fight? Well, he's doing good right now because he's not in a rush. He's taking his time, realizing this is the first round. Well, Ponce de Leon has landed a couple laps, and Batista shaking up. It's almost like Daniel Ponce de Leon said, welcome to the big time. He wants to get another first round knocking there and build on his record. Definitely gave it a go that time. Chan of Mexico, the Mexican fans. Looking for at least one victory here tonight. Sacramento has always been a great fight town. Some great champions like Tony the Tiger Lopez, Loretto Garza, the late Diego Corrales, and Bobby Chacon. Part of the Sacramento boxing history. Nobody really throwing the jab out there. Sweeping left for the champion. Batista still looks, looks a bit tight. He hasn't really loosened up yet. Oh, nice oh, oh. Batista's down. That was right on the chin. And let me tell you, the ropes held him up, and he still looks really wobbly on his feet. Ponce de Leon wants to get back in there, wants to get in. Referee's giving him a good long count. Plenty of time, referee John oh, Shirley looking this at him. Is it. That's it. it, that's it, it's over. And it just showed that Ponzinon was very warm. He started the fight off fast and through combinations and went right after Batista. It's like he did say, welcome to the big time. This is my ring and I want to prove it. I'm coming after you and I want to take this fight. And he did. A right-left combination sent Batista down the first time. They connected 19 power shots in that first round. He gets his 10th first-round knockout of his career in emphatic fashion. Daniel Ponce de Leon. And Batista didn't look like he was that warm. He was still pretty tight and rigid, and he got caught at that point when he was tight and rigid. And we wondered about the 21-year-old Batista in his first world title fight. Would he be overwhelmed by the moment? He was overwhelmed by Daniel Ponce de Leon. The fifth title defense for Ponce de Leon. And Boom Boom's looking for the truck number that hit him. Watch the right left. And here's, here's, here's the first knockdown, and it was a right left, and it looked like Ponce de Leon threw the punch and didn't realize that it was so accurate, and it hit him right on the chin. And as you can see, Batista's still struggling and struggled from right on the chin. He didn't even realize that he caught him right on the chin. There it goes again. All he seen was the reaction, and he seen the grimace on Batista's face as he hit the ropes.
Still wobbly. Still trying to get the cobwebs out of his head. And here we go, and we're going to see the knockout. Just didn't recover. The referee gave him every chance, but Ponce de Leon took him out. Great finish by Ponce de Leon. Well, I mentioned we talked about as you get a look at the second knockdown again, the left hands finding their mark. Talked about so much talk about him not sitting down on his punches in the last fight, but I did say he had 28 knockouts. Now he's got 29. <laughs> well, nobody can say he didn't sit down under these punches. And that's what, that's what I said. He needs to sit down under his punches, and that's the kind of effect you get. Let's get the official time of the stoppage with Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, referee John Shorely steps in and stops the fight with an official time. Two minutes, 30 seconds of the very first round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout. And still, the WBO Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, the Mexico Daniel Ponce de Leon. So Daniel Ponce de Leon with a very impressive first round stoppage of Ray Batista here in Sacramento. As we take a look at the final CompuBox numbers, and it was brief, only one round's worth. And you take a look at the final punches, 20 landed by De Leon. 19 of those connected were power shots. So he landed 19 power shots out of the 20 connected. He was busier. And obviously, Batista uh, was really not a factor in this fight as Ponce De Leon took this fight right to him. 19 of 39 in the power shots, nearly 50%. And Batista was never in the fight. Well, and the know, numbers will indicate that. You know what was important for Batista? Batista should have been a lot warmer coming into the ring. Because when you're in world, when you're in world champion boxing, you've got to be warm before you step into the ring. Well, we're going to talk with Daniel Ponce de Leon in just a second. But uh, uh, just a very impressive performance. And he fought like a champion making his fifth title defense. He was relaxed. He stepped in. And he took care of business. And he was warm from the get-go. He certainly was warm from the get-go. And uh, we have Daniel Ponce de Leon here with us at ringside as he gets the 29th stoppage of his professional career, dismantling 21-year-old Ray Batista in round number one. And we are joined by Daniel Ponce de Leon. And uh, Ray, you're going to do a little translating for us. First of all, talk about what he saw early in the fight where he felt he could expose the 21-year-old. Vino que tuviste temprano en la pelea que tú sabías que lo ibas a noquear. Yo vine a tirar mis golpes fuertes, primero golpe fuerte de la pelea, tiré mis golpes fuertes, me sentía eh, que apenas estaba empezando a calentar, a agarrar mi ritmo, pero gracias a Dios la preparación de que tuve y la, la fe en Dios para ganar esta pelea. I came ready to throw, throw punches, hard punches from the beginning. I came well prepared, a lot of faith that I was going to do it, and I did it. Because of so much talk about his win against Jerry Penaloso, where people said that it was a lot of punches, but many thought it was a lot closer than the final scores would indicate, did he want to come out and finish this thing early? Yeah. Porque hubo mucho que hablar en la pelea de Penaloso, que la, te la dieron a ti. Mucha gente dijeron, entonces tú quisiste venir eh, temprano y hacer algo, pero con mucha expectativa. Así es. La pelea pasada no me preparé así al 100%, me confié. Y ahora me quise sacar esa espina de no haberme preparado al 100%. Me preparé al 200% y gracias a Dios, aquí están los resultados. Yeah, you know, because of the last fight, I wasn't was 100%, and I knew that there was a little something that I should have done more, and because of that, I, was, I wanted to make a statement this time. All right, let's take a look at the first knockdown as we take a look at the replay. It looked like a right hand and then a left that started. Vamos a ver la, lo, el replay, qué es lo que está pasando. Ahí tiré mi golpe de izquierda I, I fuerte. A left, I threw a real hard left. Eh, una recta que he estado practicando. A, a real uh, straight rep, uh, left that I've been practicing on. Y cada vez me sale más fuerte y aún me falta más. And every time that I connect that, it, it comes out good and it's going to be, be get better. Did you sense that he really hadn't recovered as we now look at the end of the fight? Así que tú sabes que después del primer knockdown no, había, no se había recuperado y le brincaste encima. Así es, se vio que él no tenía piernas y ya faltaba nomás un toquecito para, para tumbarlo. 
Yeah, absolutely. I knew that his legs weren't under him. I knew that he was still shaking up. I wanted to get on, at him right away because one more little shot would have done it, and it did. Okay, after this very impressive victory, which fight does he want the most next? Is it Israel Vasquez? Who is it? Después de esta victoria tan impresionante, ¿a quién quieres ahora? Israel Vasquez, ¿a quién? Pues la verdad que eh, Golden Boy Promotion es el que decide. Tengo una pelea más este año firmada y tres el próximo año. Tengo cuatro peleas más, mucho trabajo, entonces puedo agarrar más fogueo, puedo pelear con ellos. O sea, yo estoy listo para darles una pelea a todo mi público. Yeah, uh, Golden Boy Promotions is, is my promoter, and they'll decide. I have one more fight with them this year, and, and three more next year. Whoever they put me on, I want to good, get, give good fights to this public. And finally, one more. Uh, obviously, with the Mexican and Filipino crowd here, how important was it? I know it's more important to keep your title, but how important was it to get at least one win for Mexico? Yeah, and después de, la, de, de esta pelea que estaba en, en México perdiendo, 5 a 1, eh, ¿qué, ¿cuál fue tan importante, aparte de conservar tu título, que por lo menos una victoria para México? Pues yo, por mi parte, yo sabía que iba en una Copa del Mundo contra Filipinas. De mi parte, me preparé al 100% para ganar esta Copa para México. Por mi parte, esta Copa es para México, este campeonato es para México. Y yo soy mexicano, ¡viva México! Yeah, I, I knew it was very important with this World Cup. Unfortunately, we didn't win it. But I knew I was going to win my fight so I can contribute to the World Cup. ¡Viva México! Fantastico. Thank you. Thank you, Gio. Daniel Ponce de Leon with a very impressive performance tonight as he dismantles 21-year-old Ray Batista in round number one. Lennox, uh, you know, you take a look at this fight and, you know, there were the questions coming in about what happened in his last fight, but he really erased all doubts as far as that punching power, and now in 33 fights as a professional, he has 29 stoppages. Well, let me tell you, I wasn't really expecting that, but he, he surprised me tonight. He came out throwing power punches instead of volume, which uh, was important for this fight, and it paid off dividends for him, and he did a good job. Well, sometimes just one or two punches can do it. We saw Jerry Penalosa trailing in his fight. One punch stopped Johnny Gonzalez, a one-punch knockout to the body in the seventh round. And then in round number one, Daniel Ponce de Leon with a right-left combination that stopped Ray Batista. Lennox, pleasure as always. Pleasure. All right, well, it was an exciting night here at the Arco Arena, and still more great things to come here on HBO as we look at the boxing calendar. On September the 15th on HBO Pay-Per-View, it's 130-pound champ Juan Manuel Marquez against Rocky Juarez. Marquez is coming off his solid victory in March over Marco Antonio Barrera. September the 22nd, it's Countdown to Taylor Pavlik. It's a behind-the-scenes documentary-style look at both fighters as they prepare for the middleweight championship. Then one week later on HBO, it's the fight night, the live fight. Middleweight champ Jermaine Taylor defends his title against undefeated challenger Kelly Pavlik. On October the 6th on HBO Pay-Per-View, it's Manny Pacquiao against Marco Antonio Barrera. Pacquiao knocked him out four years ago, but Barrera says this time things will be different. An audio podcast of tonight's fight, plus many previous HBO fights and other sports programming can be found at HBO.com and iTunes. Next on HBO, stay tuned for Bill Maher, The Decider, followed by an encore of the first episode of Hard Knocks Training Camp with the Kansas City Chiefs. So for our entire HBO crew, this is Bob Papa saying so long from Sacramento, California. <laughs>